l'Afrique dans la politique étrangère de l'Union. Et je donne la parole à la rapporteure pour quatre minutes. Thank you, President, Commissioner, colleagues. This report is mainly directed at High Representative Ashton and her External Action Service. Technological developments have a revolutionary impact on the lives of people all over the world. Several EU member states and the United Nations have now identified access to the Internet as enablers of fundamental rights, and the European Commission agrees digital freedoms are part of the Copenhagen criteria. Initial policy steps through the European Instrument for Democracy and Human Rights and the No Disconnect Strategy are welcome, but we need to be much more ambitious. Tomorrow we vote for the first strategy to mainstream technologies in the EU's external actions. And I'm not suggesting over-regulation. This would hurt the open Internet. But in some policy areas, rules are needed and need to be updated to match the revolutionary impact of technological developments with adequate democratic oversight. The Commission is working on a cybersecurity plan, which this Parliament is eagerly awaiting. But let's ensure that there is no zero-sum game between cybersecurity and digital freedoms. We must put people first. The struggle for human rights has a growing technology component. Prisons are increasingly populated by dissidents confronted with their own internet and mobile communications, compromised by authorities. People facing repression deserve EU support and in any case should not be targeted with tools and technologies developed and exported from within the EU. Promoting and defending human rights also means enabling people to circumvent mass censorship and to evade cyber attacks. While the recent EU export bans on repressive technologies to Syria and Iran are important ad hoc sanctions, generally more transparency and accountability are needed. Technologies, tools or services custom made for targeted human rights violations should be categorized separately as single-use technologies and should be restricted. And EU lawful intercept standards without the context of the rule of law lose meaning. In trade agreements but also in development assistance we need to include digital freedoms in the conditionalities and enforce them. There are a lot of opportunities in EU development policies. We can bridge the digital divide, build and install basic ICT infrastructures, provide people access to knowledge and information, and enable online education in remote areas. In the first critical hours after natural disasters or during humanitarian crisis, ad hoc emergency mobile and internet connections should be set up, and ICTs are also essential for effective citizen election monitoring. In turning these opportunities into actions, we must be vigilant and recall that the EU cannot credibly promote or protect digital freedoms in the world if they're not safeguarded at home. European companies should be reminded of their corporate social responsibilities. We need human rights impact assessments in the R&D phase and must implement the concept of human rights by design. The External Action Service should take the lead in globally promoting and protecting digital freedoms by synergizing trade, security and foreign policies, by aligning our EU values and interests. We need to do justice to the new reality that technological developments create and update our laws and regulations to mainstream digital freedom. Presidents, governments cannot do this alone and the private sector has increasing responsibilities. The Internet is now governed by a so-called multi-stakeholder approach which developed organically into a network of public and private actors. And this model can only function when it's inclusive, including small businesses, Internet users and consumers who need a seat at the table. We must consider the Internet public and the public interest. I would like to thank the shadows who contributed to this and all the stakeholders that gave input to the discussion paper this report was crowdsourced, which is another reminder of how technology can assist democracy, create more openness and participation also within the EU. Thank you very much. La parole est à Madame Tico. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Strategia privind libertatea digitală în politica externă a Uniunii Europene recunoaște că accesul necenzural la internetul deschis Telefoanele mobile, comunicațiile și tehnologia informației au avut un real impact asupra drepturilor omului și libertăților fundamentale.